Hello and welcome back to Women's Football Talk, the YouTube channel that brings you all the latest news and stories from around the world of women's football. Now before we get into today's video, make sure you smash that subscribe button and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video of ours and follow us on Twitter and Instagram for all the latest news and stories from around the world of women's football. Today we look back on everything that happened in yesterday's Group C conclusions and two games that provided a lot of goals. So we'll start off with the Netherlands versus Switzerland. Now, like I said on Sunday, anything could have happened going into these games and anything did happen and everything in this game. So it was a very cagey back-to-back end-to-end first half between the two sides with uh, Daphne van Domsela and uh, Gali uh, Tolman making some great saves for both sides respectively and then it just it just ebbed and flowed backwards for the rest of the first half not really getting too exciting um, and then the second half got underway to a perfect start for the Netherlands because within five minutes a corner comes in towards the back post Stephanie van der Kras heads it back across goal and unfortunately Anna Maria Sonogorcevic turned it into her own net uh, obviously it's something that she won't want to see back again but it is a very tragic uh, thing to do um, obviously her body positioning wasn't quite right she was like to the side so it was always going to be hard for Sona Gorcevic to try and turn around and make a better clearance of that than what she did um, however immediately afterwards they managed to uh, equalise thanks to Geraldine Reutler who uh, finished up a lovely rounded uh, counter attack from uh, Switzerland and just absolutely great finish uh, for Reutler and that brought the game to life because Sweet, uh, Switzerland then grew into the game a lot more there was more confidence of them as the second half worn on and the Netherlands got a bit more cagey and once again their front three of or forward three or four of Van der Donk, Berenstein, Martins and Gilles Hroud, they just really struggled and it's clear to see that Mark Parsons' side are definitely missing Viviana Miedema, uh, who was still out to due to uh, Covid but they obviously were able to welcome back uh, Jackie Cronin and then uh, Anik now and came back from injury as well so that was two positives there for Mark Parsons' side but it just proved case in point that Viviana Miedema was definitely needed and then towards the end, about 74 minutes, uh, and he, met, he took off Berenstein and Martins having already taken off Gilles Rod and brought on Victoria Palova for Gilles Rod, Romy Lechter for Lineft Berenstein and Esme Brutz came on for Lika Martins and Romy Lechter within 10 minutes scored a goal uh, thanks to a beautiful cross from Lynn Vilms. Then Victoria Pulova scored a couple minutes later in what was probably one of the longest delays for offside ever because uh, her goal took a deflection off um, two Swiss players as the ball was played into it and whilst Pulova was initially in a offside position they didn't know whether it hit off Van der Kracht or not so that took a while to do but then uh, Romy Lechter added the fourth her second ever international goal so it's definitely a good headache for Mark Parsons to have now heading into the quarterfinal tie against France on Saturday whether Viviana Miedemar comes straight in does he start Victoria Pulova, Romy Lechter, Esme Brooks who have looked better than the more senior players or does he stick with the senior players and then bring them on in the flip side of the match but yep it wasn't and still hasn't been the best Netherlands that we saw at the 2017 Euros and obviously at the 2019 uh, World Cup but there's definite improvements there that can be made now over to the other conclusion of the Group C game between Sweden and Portugal and this one although Portugal had done well from coming from behind it was just one game too many for them this time round losing 5-0 to Sweden Philippa Agendal opened the scoring after just 21 minutes and then she did it again just before half time uh, very strange to see Agendal score two goals but the Swedes won't care and then uh, an own goal as we headed into many stoppage times in the first half because uh, there were so many injuries to both Portugal and Sweden players and it was an own goal from uh, Karoli Costa and then just after the break uh, Kosfori Aslani made it 4-0 from the penalty spot and it was just home and dry then for the rest of the second half and it was just about Sweden making sure that they just kept everyone fresh that was on the pitch and 
kept going. I mean, they did have many opportunities at the second half where Darnstina Blackstein has scored a couple of times but was ruled off for offside. However, she did score in stoppage time, Blackstein, yes. So Sweden obviously ended up winning 5 0 and advanced through as top of their group where they will face the runner up of Group D, who obviously play tonight, and their conclusion groups. So we have Italy versus Belgium and Iceland versus France. Both games kick off at 8 pm. Obviously, we know that France are through as uh, top of the group, whilst uh, Iceland, Belgium, and Italy can all go through. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens uh, in the rest of Group D. Right, we'll be back later on this week, obviously, to round up. Uh, the Group D stuff and preview the quarterfinals and the rest of the tournament but like I said at the start make sure you like and subscribe and turn on the post notification bell and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram also so you never miss out a video of ours and until next time we'll see you soon <laughs>